This is the full story of what happened between Judge Ural Glanville and lawyer Brian Steele during Young Thug's YSL RICO trial. We will start with the footage followed by commentary from Mr. Steele's lawyer, Ashley Merchant, and criminal lawyer, Bruce Rivers. Supposedly, in chambers, the Solomon Court, district attorney, or from the DA's office, as well as investigators, sheriff deputies, Mr. Copeland, and his counsel met together. None of the defense team, to my knowledge, was aware that this was going on. Mr. Steele, can I interrupt you for just a second? I'm kind of disturbed because how did you find out about any of that? Well, I'm disturbed too. Our highest court says when a court meets, because Mr. Copeland comes in, meets with the court, the court supposedly made statements, which I assume is somehow what accurate based upon what you just said. Mr. Williams and every other person wrongly charged here is entitled under the Georgia Constitution to be present. This court supposedly said, I can hold you until the end of this trial. If that's true, what this is, is coercion, witness intimidation, ex parte communications that we have a constitutional right to be present for. I'm going to give you five minutes. If you don't tell me, no, who, if you don't tell me who it is, I'm going to put you in contempt. How did you get that information I supposedly from my chambers? Did somebody tell you? You should have told me. You got five minutes. Well, you know, I don't need it. You I want to continue. Five, five, five this is what I was told. Mr. Copeland, says, Mr. Copeland says, made statements. Two. Don't take my notes. No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Steele, would you take the podium, please, sir? Mr. Steele, before I recess, I asked you, how did you get this information? I'm, I'm going to ask you again. Gives me no joy, as, as you know. Georgia Rule of Professional Conduct, please check me. Rule 1.6, comment 5 reads, and this is what I have. I know what the rule says, but here's the thing. You need to please tell me who you got it from. If you don't tell me how you got the information, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I understand, and I don't want to be held in contempt. <laughs> to have a conversation in my chambers parroted to you and others, it is that serious. Yeah, it is that serious that we should have been there and it shouldn't have happened. Well, I'm going to hold you in contempt because, no, that's well, not what I, that's not what I understand the rule to be. When a judge speaks with a witness outside the presence of the accused, the court has said it's right there in Division I, 2. Okay. That is a material or critical part of the case, and it's an automatic Deal. reversal. Um, I am asking for a mistrial. I'm of the same opinion uh, that the court has engaged uh, in behavior that uh, I believe compromises and corrupts uh, the continuation of this trial. I do believe that we are um, entitled to and should receive a copy of the transcript so that a full investigation can be made as to what we believe has occurred here. Um, and so I take the same position as Mr. Steele. Um, I am asking for a mistrial. I do not believe that we can proceed at this point based upon the information that we've received. On behalf of Shannon Stillwell, I am going to be moving for a mistrial. We were instructed to come 8.30 for a 9 o'clock start. We did not start till approximately 11 o'clock. We figured something was going on. We were given no information about any meeting, who was meeting, what the meeting was about, or whether the meeting was ex parte or not ex parte, who requested the meeting, who was in the meeting. We were completely in the dark. I'm asking the court for mistrial. Motion for mistrial denied. All right, Mr. Steele's in, uh, in custody. Yes, sir, you certainly may. Mr. Williams does not wish to go forward without me being here. You are removing me against his will, my will. You've taken away his right to counsel. I'm going to file a notice of appeal, but for whatever reason that doesn't take um, and you don't give a bond, then um, I'd ask that I can be with Mr. Williams and we work on our case for all those weekends. Otherwise, I can't prepare. I speak with Mr. Williams all the time. That's up to you. If that comes to pass, um, you have my uh, support. I will talk with our sheriff and we may be able to make that work, okay? During my hearing, the judge is admitting that he had this ex parte communication and it seems like that should be what everyone's focused on, not whether or not Brian is going to tell him who told him the judge had this ex parte. It just seemed like deflecting. You know, the judge was in trouble, got caught with having this ex parte hearing. And instead of admit to that and handle that, you know, when Brian brought it up, they're going to throw Brian in jail. It just, it, it didn't make a lot of sense. But like you said, it's unheard of. Um, these proceedings are supposed to be what we call adversary, where all the defense is there. The defendants, the defense lawyers are all supposed to be present. But instead, they chose to have this meeting without inviting any of the defense, without letting them know. And when they brought brought that up, the lawyer ends up in custody. And I was doing some research this morning working on this appeal, and the law is really clear. If you have an ex parte communication with a witness during trial, it is reversible error. So this error is, and what that means in the legal world is that's about as bad as it gets. That means it's reversible. That means that any conviction is going to be reversed because of this. If they want to try and remedy this, they better hurry up and remedy it. And the state should really be 
thinking about that because the state's duty is to preserve their conviction. So if they were to get a conviction, they have a duty to make sure that the conviction stands on appeal. And this is reversible error. So I don't understand why they're not jumping up and saying, give him these transcripts, give him what he asked for in this ex parte. They have a duty to preserve the record as well. Otherwise, they're just wasting the taxpayer's dollars and keeping people incarcerated while they try this case that they know is not going to stand up on appeal if there is a conviction. Here you have a witness that's been sworn. There's been some testimony that's been taken. Now you take this witness, bring him into the ch judge's chambers, and you're not being given a transcript of what they talked about? How do we not know that the judge is intimidating that witness with jail if he doesn't testify a certain way? And this is all about Kenneth Copeland, Lil Woody, or nut, as he's known to his buddies, about whether or not he is going to testify and, you know, about him cooperating and that kind of thing. His lawyer was in that meeting. No doubt in my mind that his lawyer is the one that disclosed this to Mr. Steele. And Mr. Steele isn't coughing her up. So they're going to have a hearing on this on the 25th of June to determine whether or not Miss Bump is this fine fired lawyer she's gonna be questioned by the judge and if she doesn't answer him appropriately the judge is gonna hold her in contempt and then she goes to jail it's getting a little out of control don't you think